welcome to the Lotco Business Podcast, a show all about helping you as a retailer, brand, or creative understand the actual business side of running your business. I offer straightforward, practical advice about the nitty gritty of making money from your creative passion. We will be covering bite-sized business and marketing lessons, as well as interviews with experts and trailblazers in the fashion, homewares, and design industries. My name is Melissa Robbins. I'm a business coach, color-loving, non-coffee-drinking Melbourneian. Let's get into it. Hello, and welcome to today's podcast. My name is Melissa Robbins. I am a product-based business coach. What I want to talk to you about today is how to use Instagram for your e-commerce slash retail business or brand. Now, when talking about Instagram, some people love it, some people hate it. Um, You're going to get everything in between. Most people know that they need to use it or it's a part of their marketing strategy. Some people rely on it too much as their only marketing strategy, which I definitely do not encourage. But it is definitely something that you need a presence on. Whether you use it a lot, I think everyone should have a presence on Instagram. And, you know, depending on what your type of business is, depends on how much you will use. So what we're going to talk about today, though, if you are using Instagram as a marketing strategy, um, what you should be doing to make sure that you are showing up enough. Now, the reason I'm talking about this today is because a number of times I've had a few clients come to me and say, I'm just not getting the sales. I'm just not getting in front of people. No one's going to my website. I'm just not getting traction. The algorithm's not, you know, my likes aren't there. My uh, engagement's not there. I'm not getting pushed out to new people. So these are all sort of things that people come up with. And Not always, but occasionally I look at someone's Instagram and I think, well, you've hardly posted. Like if I look at your last, you know, week, you might have posted three times or or once in a reel. Um, Some people just show up on stories. So there's a whole gamut of different things that people are doing. Some people show up a lot. Um, Some people show up with great imagery, but then their storytelling isn't there. So what I just want to go over today is ways that you can use it and guidelines of how I believe it should be used if you're using it for your business and if you're using to promote your product business. And you know, suggestions for how much you should be using it in terms of how often you should be using your feed, stories, reels, and so on. So let's get into it. First of all, just in case you haven't already got this, make sure that you have a business account set up because then you can get all your stats and data and find out way more information than you can if you didn't. And you also, if you have a physical store, make sure that allows you to enter in your address too. So that's great because you want to have your physical retail store um, on your page. All right. So then when it comes to content, what we want to do here is think about what sort of content you want to be putting out. And This again comes back to you don't just want to have all the same. So whatever you've got, it should be a mixture. So if you've got great campaign photography, use that, but don't use it every time. If you've got great user-generated content, awesome. That is so good. It has such a good impact on decision-making right now with people, you know, deciding to buy because someone else has used it. Use it. But again, don't use it, just pr- that all that. It's going to be a mixture. Um, if you have great behind the scenes, you've got um, you actually, you know, doing videos of you packing or you're telling the story, talking to camera, using a mixture of that campaign imagery, product imagery, lifestyle product imagery, so your products on someone else, a human. Humans are good to be in your product um, mix, so it's not just the product by itself. Um the product by itself, but also the product in situ. So let's say that you you sell a candle, then there should be candle on display, how it looks in a home, but then also the actual person maybe, you know, in the shot as well. So there's a whole mixture of different photos you should be using. All right. And then depending on who your customer is and what their values are, you might use some funny memes. You might use some funny um, little, you know, quotes or inspirational imagery. You might share other people's if you're crediting other people. So those are some things that you might be doing. You should be showcasing if you're an event, you're at a trade show, you're at a market, all the activity of the business and definitely creating a story about what you do, like that journey of from design of your product to the actual getting it made or getting it delivered in the warehouse. I've seen lots of cute reels of people getting their whole um, container ship shipment sent or when you get your first samples. All of those things are part of your story. Now, just as a side note, physical retail stores 
definitely it should be about when you're doing buying trips, you're you're picking up, you know, the, looking at ranges, share what you're allowed to and what you're able to. And then talk about, you know, when you get those deliveries in, how excited you are, the unpacking, all of those things should be part of your business, a part of your Instagram strategy um, and your content strategy, not just about, you know, the products that have just been delivered that day. So not just campaign shots over and over again, or not just, um, you know, a product shot or a flat lay over and over again. So definitely mixing up the type of content that you put out there. Now, if we get really specific, you should be using all the areas of Instagram. So, And when I say that, I mean, you should make sure that your, your Instagram bio, it really can be your face if that you're part, if you're already a visual of your brand, or it can just be a logo or even a shot of your store if that's appropriate. In your bio, make sure you give me that really um, succinct summary of who you are and what you sell and what you offer or what problem you solve. So be really clear on what actually you sell and who you are for. So you connect with your customer straight away. Again, if you have a physical store and lots of different types of brands in your store, tell me some of your best selling brands in your bio so I know what sort of, you know, what you've got in your store. Or tell me that you sell homewares, fashion, and gifts. Uh, tell me that you're based in Maury. Whatever it might be, tell me a little bit more about your, your, your connection to who you are so I get to know you instantly in that bio. And as I said, if you have a physical store, make sure that your address is linked in that bio and that becomes part of when you actually set your Instagram up. And then also, um, I would just have things going directly to your homepage, or you might have specific collections that you're sending people to on your Instagram bio as well. So moving down from your um, Instagram bio, your actual photo, next is your highlights. Making sure that you have highlights and really utilizing that and updating them regularly to showcase whether it might be new arrivals or bestsellers or behind the scenes or customer reviews or try-ons in store. What can you put in your highlights that really give that summary of who you are as well? Maybe it's just gift ideas in there that you update regularly or what are the new things that you're, you know, been doing lately? So having a highlight strategy as well, making sure you've got different things in there to really represent who you are as a retail store or a brand. If you've a brand, I would highly recommend having Stockers one on there too. So people can flick through and see your product in other people's stores too. So it really gives an idea about where they are, where you are, um, that credibility about you know what stores you're stocked in and where people can find you as well. Next, moving on to your feed post. Now, gone are the days when when I first had my business and Instagram first came out, I would be posting three to four times a day on Instagram because it was all chronological. And so I had to, to stay relevant. You don't need to do that anymore, but you definitely should be posting, I think, on your feed as a still post or a carousel post at least three to seven times a week. If you have a physical retail store, there is no reason you can't have five, five, six photos on there because you've got so much product to choose from. If you have a your own brand, I still believe you should be having at least three to five images on your feed post a week based around those things I talked about earlier. So maybe a campaign shot, maybe a user generated um, image, maybe your product on someone or a lifestyle shot, and then maybe a, you know, like a quote or behind the scenes or something else about your story um, that's not just, just about your product. All right. So definitely on your feed, ideally between three and seven, depends on how much different range of stock you have, but three to seven posts on your feed per week. You might use carousels in there. Like if you have a physical retail store and you've got a new delivery, I would be putting, you know, 10 photos on there if you've got 10 different colorways or in that one delivery, there was five styles. Definitely put them on and share as well and showcase you know, like if let's say you get a dress, um, put a dress on, put the front, the back, the side view, the close up, the the detail, uh, maybe a model shot, maybe you know one of your staff in the in the product as well. So utilizing that one post and putting lots of detail in there as well. Now I'll get to stories later, but these are the sort of things that can also be shared to stories, so you don't have to recreate everything in here as well. Oh, sorry, other carousels that you might add in there as well. If you are, um, if you have your own product and you want to showcase, you know, like how to use it, or um, other people have used it in this way, or you know, seen in the wild. Um, here's some images of the product on other people, or here's, um, you know, our stores have got their newest deliveries this week and it's like four four amazing retail stores on there as well. So you could definitely use carousels a few times to really showcase what your product is. And then that also could be where you might use 
you might use your campaign photography to showcase all the different angles and stuff. So you might have a campaign shot that's quite, um, you know, from a distance, then you might have a close up, then you might have a different angle, then you might have someone using the product with their hands. So what can you do to showcase that within even one carousel too? And then when you repost that and reuse that content later on, just use a different cover shot for the um, the carousel. So it doesn't have to be new content all the time. You can definitely repurpose content and use content from, you know, it depends on your product and how regularly it changes, but use content from six weeks ago or, you know, four months ago. Like there's no reason you can't reuse content. And that is that is one of the ways to save you time and energy as well, as well as a planning app, which sidetracked i'll get back to that afterwards hello lovely if you're looking for a way to grow your product business without relying on facebook ads or posting daily on social media then i invite you to register for my free masterclass this is happening very very soon and inside of this masterclass i'm sharing the strategy behind building a profitable product-based business so you can attract consistent customers and scale to six figures and beyond I also emphasize how to create a sustainable long-term business which is such an important factor for me I'm so excited to be teaching this masterclass soon. So make sure you go and register for your free spot by heading to the link in the show notes below. So we've done the bio, we've done the highlights, we've done the feed posts. Let's get to reels. One of the things that you could do on your, if you're looking at doing three to seven posts on your feed a week, one or two of them could be a reel. So if you're desperate, you could use one of those as a reel. But as a side, you should definitely be posting between two to five reels a week as well. And again, they don't have to be complicated. You often have the imagery, you often have the photography. Um, it's just a matter of actually going through and setting it up. I know this takes time and it does take effort, but if Instagram is one of your main marketing strategies, then you need to invest the time and energy into it. If you have multiple marketing strategies and Instagram is just one of the many things that you do, then maybe you don't need to do it as much. But when I was, as I said, I was talking to a few people in the last few weeks and I looked at them, their Instagram and like, is this the only marketing you're doing? Is this one of the main things? And they said, yes. So, okay, well then you need to change things because first of all, I highly recommend you have many different um, marketing strategies, but if you are mainly using Instagram, this is what you need to do instead. So reels. Uh, a mixture of trend-based ones, so maybe it's the music, maybe it's a little, um, you know, a template that you see pop up, maybe it is the new delivery and you can, you know, repurpose some of the imagery, maybe it's a try-on in store, maybe it's talking to camera and going through the range that you have, maybe it is a, um, you know, like a sped up version of, you know, something happening in the store, um, if you're doing have your own brand. Maybe it's you packing your orders, delivering your orders. There's all sorts of things you can do for reels. And there's a huge amount of, and I'll put links in um, the show notes, but there's things that you can follow. Like I think it's called Product Real Tips, which is a great um, Instagram to follow where they give so many good suggestions. And I've got a highlight on my page as well, which is all about um, reels that I think would really work really well for retail stores or brands. So you can check that out as well. Um, And the way Instagram has is set up now as well. It's so easy to get a template, to get music, to to add it to the time into the beat. They make it so simple. You only need to open your Instagram, um, click on the plus and you click on the real button. And on the top right of the screen, it's got a thing called templates. So you just click on templates. And that is one way just to go through and find a trending reel, something that's going on. Um, it's really simple and easy to then add your music and your media to it. So there's really no excuse to not do at least one. I highly recommend doing two to five a week though. And um, importantly, keep them snappy. Attention spans are short. So there's no like set time that you should have a real length be, but the transitions between them need to be sharp. So don't sort of like... Um, you know, that first image just be the same thing for five seconds. That's not going to keep attention. So have faster between transitions, edit and cut them. And if you don't know how to do it, get someone to help you with it because it's really important to make sure that you um, get, you're going to get more views on your reels when they're sharper, snappier, and like, you know, get to the point quickly or show me like 10 outfits in, um, you know, seven seconds, bang, 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 bang. I want to see the outfit change, 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 change. I love seeing those reels. I love seeing people talk about, you know, um, five ways to wear this jacket and they've got like five different photos of them actually showcasing that. All of those things are going to help you sell more of your product. So definitely worth investing in them. 
uh, reels, they're not going anywhere. They obviously are changing and evolving all the time. Like it's not the same format as what it was two years ago, but it's definitely something that can, um, that it is worth investing in. Um, reels, make sure that you use a, you know, a great cover image, the, the most sort of aesthetically appealing. Um, if you are showcasing sort of a range of how to wear something, use good hooks or um, information on top of the reel, uh, sorry, on the start of the reel. Um, really mix up the different versions that you're going to use. All right. Now, shopping, make sure you have the shopping tags if you don't already have that. and But don't use them on every feed post so that not everything is about the um, what you can buy. Sometimes just have it be an image without a shopping because when you're looking through the feed, sometimes it's good to not have that button pop up as well, which some people might not agree with, but that's just my view on things. Definitely share lots of these things to your stories as well, and then create other things in your stories too, which are unique. So there might be those, you know, less aesthetically appealing, um, you know, um, things as you're walking along on the street and doing something, or your you know, the the arrival of your delivery. It's, you know, all the card boxes. So those things are great for on stories, but they're not going to get you new followers. So stories are great for connecting with your audience that you already have. They're not really about um, getting new followers. So if the only thing you're doing is stories, you're not going to grow your Instagram because that's generally where the people who already follow you find you and look at your content. It is not going to get pushed out to new people. So that is the reason you need to use Reels, the feature that Instagram is using more of as well. Using hashtags. So um, that's another thing that definitely if you have a physical retail store, utilizing that to showcase, you know, who you are, where you are. So let's just say that you're in Byron Bay. Um, you, you would definitely include, you know, Byron Bay boutique store, Byron Bay fashion store, like shop in Byron Bay. Maybe not Byron because it's probably, you know, lots more stores. But where somewhere, where, where, are you, where do you live that's going to help draw people in? Um, so when I go to a new town, when I'm, you know, holidaying somewhere new, I often look at hashtags to see where I should shop or see what's tagged in that area in the location, in the um, location view, and if there's any cool stores that I can then go and visit. So make sure you use hashtags wisely to pick up on that if you have physical store. And then if you have a online store or your brand, make sure that you use your brand to be seen as well. So let's just say that you sell LMA, like it's a really popular brand, you know, make sure that you're tagged as an LMA Stocker Melbourne or um, whatever it might be. So that you're connecting. If people are looking for that product or that brand, then that's how they can find you as well. And that's another reason to use the tags as well of brands so that other people can find you that way too. Because I'll often, when I'm looking at a brand, I'm looking through their uh, feed, I'll look at the tags and see where they're located or what stores they're in. So then I can go and view the products in person as well. So that's often what a lot of people do. And then if you're um, to be found without, you know, people searching particularly for your brand, example, my client, you know, Kelly from Clipster, she has a hat clip. Someone might not know what it's called, so that she's definitely going to use the tag hat clip to describe, um, you know, or a clip for your hat or definitely hashtags that show the purpose and use the language that the customer is going to use as well. So make sure you use, you know, what their um, language they're, they're going to seek, that they're going to search for something in. As well. So, for example, you're not going to put the color cerulean blue, which is the Devil Wears Prada, um, that you know, famous scene. Um, but you might use the word cobalt or blue. Like, what are the terms that your customer is probably going to use? Not necessarily you. You can call that in your, you know, designs and everything like that. But what term is your customer maybe going to search for that you're not necessarily going to call that product? So use that as hashtags or in your product descriptions too when you doing that on your Instagram, on your product page. We've covered bio, we've covered the highlights, we've covered the feed posts, we've covered the reels, we've covered the stories, we've covered that you need to have hashtags and you're going to use shopping. Make sure you use your pinned posts as well. So that's the other thing on your feed. You've got the chance to use three different pinned posts. So what can you put on your pinned posts? They really talk about, you know, what that's really define your store or your brand. Is it, you know, how to use your product as a pin post? Is it a bit of a story about your brand or, you know, your background? Is it your new collections or new season? How can you use your pin post to maximize, you know, that most people are going to see those ones as well? So really try and use them um, strategically so you're showcasing your best self type of thing as well. One thing I touched on but I haven't dived into yet is the actual caption that you're going to use in each of the instances of actual posting 
you know, on your feed or on your reels. Make sure that you, the caption that you use is speaking naturally. It's like you're talking to someone. It's like you're talking to your best friend. How can you use language that's just very storytelling? Really, you know, why did you buy this product or why did you design this color? Why did you pick this brand? Use storytelling to in your Instagram and in your captions as opposed to just facts. So let's talk about the benefits of the product, not so much the features of the product. So don't just tell me that it's, you know, these sizes or it's made from this or um, I want to know how someone feels when they're wearing it or what sort of occasion it's going to be worn for or why you designed it in the first place or why you bought it in the first place. So add some more storytelling elements to your caption as opposed to just talking about features of your product as well. And then make sure you reply to comments. So reply to and engage with comments, interact with other people, you know, comment on other people's posts. Um, I don't, I don't want you to spend hours doing this or, you know, have an allocated 10 posts that you have to, um, you know, interact with. But remember that it is social. Remember that people are looking for answers and information. If you have common questions to get asked, you can set up automations for your DM. So help, you know, automate that process. So if you're getting the same thing again and again, you can set up things like many chat to say answer frequently asked questions. You can ask people to sort of comment a certain thing if they want to get access to a particular sale or subscribe to um, your email, all that sort of thing. You can set up automations to add people to your mailing list and all of those sort of things too. All right. And then being, as we said at the start, that you are set up as an Instagram business account, you've got to make sure... Every so often, when I would say every week, but I don't think everyone's going to do that, um, but I would certainly say every month, go back and look at what's going on. So track, reach, you know, the engagement, conversion rates, what is actually happening in your data, in your analytics? Is a particular type of time of day better for you? And this is where those planning apps can come into it as well. They can suggest your preferred or sorry, not the preferred, they can suggest the um, most engagement time or, you know, when your most of your followers are on and all that sort of stuff. So planning apps, I'll just mention a couple. So there's things like Planoly, Later, there's Content Studio inside um, Facebook. There's a few others, but they're the sort of main ones that I know people use. Uh, if there's any other suggestions, let me know what they are and I'll um, add them onto my list on the show notes as well. All right, so we did talk about briefly using user-generated content, so UGC. That is just a whole other story about, you know, like how as one of your marketing strategies, trying to get more of that. But I highly recommend doing that, whether it's with, you know, a collaboration or an influencer that you're going to use or just a brand ambassador um, or someone you pay just for user-generated content specifically. So definitely partnering with other people, trying to use it as a strategy so they can, you know, take over your Instagram or they're wearing, they're doing a try on in store of all your, all the um, new arrivals that you have. What can you do um, to generate more of that user generated content and also um, request it from your fo- from your customers so whether you on a postcard that you send out you have a particular hashtag that encourages that user generated imagery or whether you talk you know you have your, your own one that you talk about often on your Instagram you know tag us with this so that we can um, repost and reshare your your photos and stuff as well so really encouraging that interaction with your customers too. All right, and it's just good to remember as well that only 3 to 5% of your followers will see all your content. So it's really important to repurpose, reuse, um, and not get a, be afraid of using that content again as well in your email marketing or in another platform like Facebook you know, and Instagram or Pinterest as well as TikTok and so those sort of things as well. Taylor Swift isn't afraid to, you know, re-record her um, songs, release the same albums, have the same concert that she's doing and have a movie all from that same content. So if someone like her can repeat, 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 uh, it is definitely something that other people should be doing as well. Another thing, make sure that you use the, you know, new trend at the moment or it's been around for a little while now is to use that B-roll content. So you've randomly filming yourself do things, then you can 
take clips that you keep on your camera and that sorry on your phone and that you can just reuse again and again so regularly throughout your day or throughout your week set a little reminder just to take some b-roll content of you doing normal things so whether it's you setting up your store or opening your store for the day whether it's you packing orders entering things on your website whatever it might be just sort of b-roll content so that content that is just a random filming you're not looking to camera you're not talking to camera you're just doing things and you can use that for short clips for on reels as well so make sure you add that sort of thing into your daily sort of weekly plan so you know so you can pull from your camera roll when you're sort of stuck and you've got some sort of you know video to pull on to create a quick little um trending reel or something like that as well all right so we've covered a lot of things um what i want to get clear here on is that I think Instagram is an amazing tool for business. It is a free tool to use initially. It takes time and it takes money to actually, you know, get your content and actually create amazing imagery to be able to use. But I think it's well worth that effort and time. However, I would not suggest it is your only marketing strategy. I think there's a whole other gamut of things that can be used and Instagram is just one piece of your puzzle. If it's something you need help with and you know that marketing, that Instagram should not be your only marketing strategy, let me know. Um, That is exactly what we talk about in my roadmap program. We go through all the different strategies that are available to you, all the different ways that you can attract people into your business, nurture them and, you know, encourage that ongoing relationship with your customers. Um, I love Instagram. I think you should have a presence there, but I don't think it should be the only thing you are doing. And I know what I've just talked about seems like a lot of stuff to do, but this is where if you have that real content plan um, ahead of time, you can reuse your content. You can use it in all the different areas of your business, whether it's your email, whether it's your um, Instagram, whether it's, you know, your TikTok as well. How can you reuse the content more wisely, then that's something that I think. And I know what I've just talked about seems like a lot of stuff to do, but this is where if you have that real content plan um, ahead of time, you can reuse your content, you can use it in all the different areas of your business, whether it's your email, whether it's your um, Instagram, whether it's you know your TikTok as well. How can you reuse the content more wisely, then that's something that I, that's something that you can always get better at. And then you can always figure out, you know, like, how do I use this content in more ways to give it a longer lifespan as well? All right, let's just summarize that. What are the things you need to be doing if you're a product brand, if you're a retail store? So um, make sure you update your bio, make sure you update your highlights so that they are new and um, fresh and, you know, showing current information. Make sure that you actually use all the different areas. So you put things on your feed post at least three to seven times a week. You actually use reels two to five times per week. And again, depends on how much you have available, depends on how much you do that. The bare minimum though would be three posts a week and at least two reels a week, I believe. And then you need to also be doing stories, but stories are, remember, for those probably already following you, you're not going to get new. Um, you're not going to get you know, that interaction as much from stories. So stories are great and they really engage and people get to know you better, but they're for the people who already know you already. All right. And then making sure that you use a mixture of different types of content. So behind the scenes, campaign shots, product shots, um, close-ups, far away, products with with people, photos without people, um, photos, images and videos of you, um, talking to camera, you know, staff in store, behind the scenes, a whole mixture of different things. And look, there's, there's so many different examples of people who do it well. I'll put some in the show notes so you can have a look at those as well. All right, so I hope that's been helpful. Um, I have got a download that you can grab, which I'll put in the show notes, which is a whole 100 plus ideas for content and what your Instagram and stuff should look like. So um, grab that from the link in the bio and I look forward to sharing more with you in the next couple of weeks. Thank you so much for listening to the Lotco Business Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure you subscribe to receive future episodes as they are released. And I'd be so, so grateful for a review on Apple Podcast. If you would like a copy of the show notes or any of the links mentioned today, please jump onto my website at thelotco.com.au forward slash podcast. Have an amazing week and I look forward to chatting to you again soon.